Our world is full of assumed binaries, man and woman, hungry and full, strong and weak. And this is true for sports as well. Many of us, particularly researchers and coaches, accept that sports either do or do not build character. But is the answer really so black and white? No. In fact, the answer is represented more by a continuum of logic, or spectrum of colors, with violet marking one end and red the other, that denote the various types of character that sports can develop. Sociologist George Sage argues the violet, that if one agrees that an ethos of winning is the only thing prevalent in the American sport culture, it becomes clear that sport experiences may be providing patterned reinforcement of attitudes, values, and behaviors that are actually antithetical to character-building ideals. It is evident that this model permeates the values and structure of all levels of sports, originating at the professional level and extending to youth programs. Spectators often see not only youth players, but also amateurs and professionals purposefully injuring opponents for the sake of gaining the upper hand and sacrificing the individual joy of participation for the orderly functioning of the system, in turn prioritizing the outcome over the love of the game. Alternatively, Jay Coakley presents a standpoint representing the red, that sport participation is most likely to have positive socialization consequences when it provides athletes with opportunities to explore and develop identities apart from playing sports, knowledge-building experiences that go beyond the locker room and playing field, new relationships with different people, examples of how lessons learned in sports may be applied to situations apart from sports, and opportunities to develop and display competence in non-sport activities all of which are difficult when coaching with a winning-is-everything mindset. At this end of the spectrum, players high-five teammates as they exit the game or finish a practice drill. They come together as a community of practice to understand and empathize with each other's background and place in society, and they learn about the negative effects of hegemonic masculinity. Then there is the rest of the continuum, the turquoises, the magentas, the ambers, and the beiges. We see players who are decompetitive on the court, field, and ice, but volunteer in the community. Players who complain to referees, but are also good teammates. And professional athletes who drive Lamborghinis and donate millions of dollars to charity. However, we must remember that an athlete's sports habitus does not develop independent of outside forces. She, he does not objectively choose their position on the spectrum. Each player has a coach, and each coach has a philosophy that directly or indirectly affects the meanings each athlete gives to sports. Through this relationship, a coach is able to establish, reinforce, or change the character of an athlete. As coaches, we not only have the power to influence our athletes' choices, but also to impact the type of people they become. So ask yourselves.